So, Al, can you give me an example in this center square of how you went through this process and really got clear on what it was that you wanted to offer to the world? Um, if we go back to 30 years, I was in college, started my college career in art, thought I wanted to be an illustrator and then go into advertising. I ended up with a degree in physics and math. So kind of as far right brain to as far left brain as, as I could go. And being that I have, I kind of loved both sides of that, the pool business was a perfect place because there's an artsy, creative, emotional side and then there's this physical how-to side. And for me, when I first got into the business, the guy that I worked for, that I eventually bought the company from, he his, his idea was really basic pools built on volume. So that's the model that I knew. And that's something that I could certainly understand. You go 100 miles an hour, you go as fast as you can. And you know, you're, you're kind of keeping it to least common denominator. Price becomes more important. All those different things came into being. And it came into play in terms of how you built, how you built a business, which I would bet that I don't have statistics on it, but I would bet that probably 80% of the pool companies out there kind of run on that model. Maybe maybe even a few more than that. Is that it's about volume and about numbers and about being specifically price conscious. Which an interesting fact there is buying decisions, price is only about 11% of any buying decision. And yet, most companies build based on price, which is, which is kind of a... a there's a little headbutt there that really doesn't need to be there, but we automatically put it there. So how did things switch for you, going from that model to the way that you operate now? Well, what happened was, it was a process. It's not like one day I woke up and said, I'm not doing that anymore, I'm only doing this. But for me, because I had the art side, I loved the design and the drawing and the sculpture and the, all of that, and yet I had the practical how-to side and the construction made sense to me as well. I slowly pushed the boundaries, or right, literally the year I took over the company, we were set for doing volume, and I slowly started pushing the boundaries of what else could I do. And so my experience was 20 years in, in the making, 25 years in the making, but it, it wouldn't have to be. Now, looking back, it, it's a lot more understandable. But my process was sort of a slow push a little more. The industry wasn't ready for it. It was specifically vinyl liner pools, it weren't ready for all of the changes and all of the things that we started doing. So the manufacturers wouldn't help. So instead, we just started manufacturing it on the site, building things on the site to do what we wanted. And eventually, the industry now is really catching up to that. They're realizing that customization, having something unique, having something fulfilling means something. 25, 30 years ago, it was about getting a swimming pool. Today, it's about creating an environment. And unfortunately, I think a lot of companies are still building swimming pools. They're not really creating environment. They're thinking less about, and side tangent, but I think tr tr tremendously important, is an awful lot of companies are thinking about the product and the material instead of what happens. And, and that's where the switch for me happened, was understanding that it's more important to create an experience for a homeowner in this process. Because I don't care if you're selling a $30,000 swimming pool or you're selling a $3 million swimming pool. That person's spending money that they had hard-earned money to do something specifically that they want to get out of it. You don't put a pool in just because it's a thing to do. You, there's some attachment to why you want to do it. And most pool companies, and this is where the Center Square helped me understand, that it is about me, but it's more about them and how I create an experience for them. And again, $30,000, $3 million, doesn't matter what the dollar value is. There's, you've got to look at the motivation as to why the customer did that. And I would say most fall flat in the experience of what did they really want to get from it was a $30,000 pool or a $3 million pool both give people a certain feeling. And it's our jobs as the companies to help them get to that feeling and realize that the steps that we make and the choices we make, whether it's financial or not, helps them or hurts them get to that experience. So for me, the journey was slow, and I finally got to the point where it was killing me. Either I got to get out of this, or I got to decide what it is that I really want to do. And it was at that point that we decided. And fortunately, we had this whole process in front of us to say, let's go through this and understand who we are. And once we did that, it was crystal clear, like, I don't ever want to do that again. I don't want to do all the practices that I did before, because it hurt people, it hurt customers, and it hurt me. Instead... Let's only do the stuff we love, and, and it's different for everyone. There's, you know. It, so for a while, we had a sign on the wall with the mission statement that we defined 
legendary escapes. So it was build for the right customers. At the right pace. At the right pace. Again, a build huge issue in right our industry. Pace. Yep. That's that's another part. Everyone's so frenetic and anxious to, oh, I got to go, I got to go, I got to get it done. Well, sure. Although, emotional connection, all of those other things, it's a process. And yes, customers don't know what they don't know. It's our job to help them get there. So for us, that was a reminder. Build at the right pace. Build it for the right customer with the right level, level of creativity. Because again, that was a defining thing for me in the center square was if it doesn't thrill me to think about it every day. Now, this is just me. It doesn't have to be anyone else that, does, that, that builds a pool. But if it doesn't thrill me every day to think about that pool, whether it's eight feet down in the ground, building it up out of the ground, or once it's done, if, if it doesn't thrill me to think about it, then it's not creative enough for me. And Hence, enjoy the work. Which enjoy is the, the work. Yeah, and, and, en and enjoy the work. So it, it was those things. Right pace, right customer, right high amount of credit, of high level of creativity, creativity quality, to, and design to match our brand, and, and, and then enjoy the and work. then enjoy the work. And if the enjoy the work wasn't there, the rest of it wouldn't matter. I mean, that just supports all of it. Mm -hmm. But we did define the type of customer, and we went through this process, but without knowing who we were. And then now we can identify the customer. But my process again, getting back to your original question with sort of this slow, methodical, beat my head against the wall until I, you know, I aged myself by 20 years by the process, an additional 20 years versus what I needed to, if I had understood better what it was at the core of me, what I really wanted to do, it would have been so much easier to go, oh, that's obvious, don't take that job because it's not just not going to fit. And I take the job instead and then get into an argument, get into a fight, finish it, but be unhappy. More importantly, be busy over here doing this when this really cool work that could have been working right now had to be postponed or I didn't get it all because I was too busy doing something I didn't like to do. And I think that's another part that you know me is, but we got to have work. Well, when we got to have work, we're busy doing busy work when we could be doing cool stuff that's waiting there for us. Have you found that you've been able to flip that a little bit? Don't take work just to take work. It's better to sit at the office and think about the work that you'd like to be doing rather than just say yes mm -hmm. to anything mm -hmm. that doesn't make sense. No doubt about it. And, and many, many, many examples of that. Just because the phone calls come in and people say, we want you, you don't have to want them back. 